Communication Technologies in Java EE. In this lesson, we will discuss about the communication technologies in Java EE. Communication technologies provide mechanisms for communication between clients and servers. The Java EE specification requires support for a few communication technologies, i.e., Internet Protocols, Remote Method Invocation Protocols, Object Management Group Protocols, Messaging Technologies, Data Formats. Let's look at the Java EE communication technologies one by one. The first one is Internet Protocols. Internet protocols define the standards by which the different pieces of the Java EE platform communicate with each other and with remote bodies. The Internet protocols supported by the Java EE platform are TCP, IP, HTTP and SSL. TCP IP Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol these protocols provide the reliable delivery of streams of data from one host to another. HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol This protocol is used to obtain hypertext objects from remote hosts. Generally, HTTP messages consist of requests from client to server and responses from server to client. SSL Secure Socket Layer this is a security protocol which provides privacy over the Internet. Remote Method Invocation Protocols Remote Method Invocation, RMI, allows developers to build distributed applications in the Java programming language. RMI uses Java language interfaces to define remote, remote objects. It uses the Java Serialization Technology and Java Remote Method Protocol, JRMP to convert local method invocations into remote method invocations. Object Management Group Protocols Object Management Group, OMG, protocols allows the user and the objects in the Java EE platform to access remote objects developed using the OMG's Common Object Request Broker Architecture, CORBA technologies. CORBA objects are defined using the Interface Definition Language, IDL. Object Request Broker, ORB, is a library for CORBA objects to locate and communicate with one another. ORB's communication with each other using the Internet Inter-ORB Protocol, or IIOB. The OMG technologies required here are Java IDL and RMI IIOP. IDL. Java IDL allows Java clients to invoke operations on CORBA objects that have been defined using IDL. It is a part of the Java SE platform and it consists of CORBA API and ORB. The Java client is linked with the stub and uses the CORBA API to access the CORBA object. RMI IIOP RMI IIOP is an implementation of the RMI API over IIOP. RMI IIOP allows application component providers to write remote interfaces in the Java programming language. The remote interface can be converted to IDL and implemented in any other language that is supported by an OMG mapping and an ORB for that language. The application clients must use RMI IIOP to communicate with enterprise beans. Messaging Technologies Messaging technologies provide a way to asynchronously send and receive messages. The messaging technologies in Java EE are the Java Message Service API, Java Mail API. Java Message Service API provides an interface for handling asynchronous requests, reports or events that are consumed by enterprise applications. JMS messages are used to coordinate these applications. The Java Mail API provides an interface for sending and receiving messages for users. Both of the APIs can be used for asynchronous purposes, 
If the speed and reliability will be our primary requirement, then JMS will be preferred. Data formats Data formats define the types of data that can be exchanged between the components. The Java EE platform requires support for these data formats. HTML It is a markup language used to define hypertext documents accessible over the Internet. Embed images, sounds, video streams, etc. in an HTML file. HTML documents have a globally unique location and can link to one another. Files Java EE platform supports two formats for image files. GIF graphics interchange format to call for the online transmission and interchange of high resolution graphic data and JPEG joint photographic experts group which provide a standard for compressing any still image that may be grayscale or color file this is a platform independent file format that allows many files to be combined into a single file class file I think all of you are familiar with this type of file the format of a compiled Java file as specified in the Java Virtual Machine specification. XML This is a text-based markup language that allows you to define the markup needed to identify the data and text in structured documents. Here we have concluded our discussion on the overview of Java EE platform technologies. Let's get in to discuss each technology in detail. Introduction to Java Database Connectivity, JDBC Databases are widely used for business nowadays. Every real-world application will use the databases directly or indirectly. First, let's discuss what is JDBC. In short, its main function is to provide the database connectivity for the Java program. Let's see JDBC in detail. Java Database Connectivity, or JDBC, is a Java Application Programming Interface, API. It defines classes, interfaces, and exceptions that allow the Java programmers to access databases. It provides a specification to both JDBC driver vendors and JDBC developers to remember while developing applications. Let's discuss why we need JDBC. If we want to develop data access applications which can access different RDBMS using different JDBC drivers, then we have to study all the proprietary APIs provided by those corresponding vendors. But with the help of JDBC, there's no need for a developer to study all those APIs. For example, if we want to access the various databases such as Sybase, Oracle and SQL, etc. from our program, we have to write a separate program to access each database. But while using JDBC API, we can write a single program that will be able to be sent SQL statements to the appropriate database. Here is the basic architecture of JDBC. In this architecture, there are four basic components, i.e. Java Application, JDBC API, Database Driver, and Database. Here we can see. The application may be the Java servlet, applet, or application that wants to connect to a database. JDBC API provides the classes and interfaces for the application to connect to a database. JDBC Driver Manager is the main component of the architecture that makes access to a particular database through the JDBC drivers. Drivers are also available for Open Database Connectivity, ODBC, i.e. if we can't find a JDBC driver for a particular database, but that database can be connected through ODBC, then we can access the database through ODBC driver. Let's discuss the types of drivers in the next lesson. So, understanding the basic architecture of JDBC is a must. Here are the types of the JDBC drivers. JDBC technology drivers fit into one of the four categories. They are Type 1 JDBC ODBC Bridge Driver Type 2 
Native API, partly Java driver. Type 3. JDBC Net, pure Java driver. Type 4. Native protocol, pure Java driver. We will discuss more in upcoming lessons, and now let's discuss a few advantages of JDBC. The first one is control of existing enterprise data. With the use of JDBC technology, businesses are not locked in any proprietary architecture. We can continue to use their installed databases and access information easily, even if it's stored on different database management systems. Next, simplified enterprise development. The combination of the Java API and the JDBC API makes application development easier and more economical. And also the JDBC API is simple to learn, easy to deploy and inexpensive to maintain. We don't have to worry about writing different applications to run on different platforms because of using Java. Finally, zero configurations for network computers. With the use of JDBC API, we don't need to do any configuration for the clients in the network computers, and it also supports the network computing standard and centralizes the software maintenance. Next, we will discuss about the types of drivers in detail.